in our meeting of the year so it doesn't feel like it feels like we're early um let's go for the approval of the min minutes thank you betty for july 11th and july 26th minutes any amendments or questions or comments regarding them hearing none i will accept the minutes as is i'm going to take action Four, approval of budget transfers with action five, which the, is the approval of the claims audit report, July 2024 is their motion. Thank you, Maria, second. Thank you, Rich. Um, questions, comments? Okay, all in favor? Thank you. Um, now we are ready for the report of the superintendent. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back. We're excited for the beginning of the school year on Tuesday, September 3rd. But before we get there, I wanted to take a moment to thank everybody who worked so hard at North Shore. We call it Summer at the Shore 24. Uh, this summer, all of our programs for students. Um, I want to thank Dr. Slight for all of her hard work with Mr. Michelle in setting up our TENS program. <laughs> organizing all of our professional learning of our central office employees, our custodial maintenance employees, and our administrators in helping us get ready for the opening next Tuesday. Um, and I also want to uh, thank our special education teachers, all of our faculty in the TENS program as well, um, and our special education teachers and TAs and special education admin for their, their help in the extended school year program, organizing that, uh, that ran out of middle school this year. Uh, so thank you all. We're, we're poised for a great opening. Uh, one week from today, I sent a letter to parents uh, this evening, uh, welcoming them back. Um, and we'll beginning, we'll be starting this school year with seven UPK classes, two in each of our elementary schools, and one class at the Glen Cove YMCA Center. We're very excited. Uh, as part of our preparation, the district leadership team, the administrator, Dr. Smith, Mr. Patterson, I met yesterday. And we started our meeting by talking about something that uh, came to me, and that was, I know we have a couple of Yankees fans on the board, um, the 2001 World Series Game 5 that took place about six weeks after September 11th, and it was a very emotional time. If I was at the game, if um, you were watching it at the game, you know it was a moment of extreme jubilation in the bottom of the beginning when the Yankees came from behind to the game. And uh, it was a very uh, emotional time as people going through a tough time coming together. Um, and we used that to talk about the importance of joy and happiness and how kids should love coming into our school buildings and, and how important that is. Uh, and how we work to create that. Um, and so we're excited to have these discussions as a leadership team with our faculty as well. Um, we have the operational goals, separate from our board goals, we'll be talking about tonight. Um, the leadership team, we want to uh, have conversations and discussions with teachers focused on differentiation and making money more accessible for all students. Um, from an innovation standpoint, Dr. Scott will be focusing on creating performance based assessments and authentic learning opportunities with our curriculum directors. Uh, I'll be more focused with our principals um, and some of our directors I'm talking about social media, smartphones, technology, wellness. Uh, peer relations and respect and empathy. Um, so we are excited to get going on this work. Um, we, I want to give Dr. Smythe uh, another shout out uh, for her help in organizing the new presentation. Uh, we had our first day today. We'll have some great new faculty joining the North Shore team. Um, through our workshops, we're talking about our shared value outcomes and that connects to the North Shore journey. Uh, how the North Shore Journey advances the shared value outcome and how to create engaging and active learning. We had amazing workshops from one of our teachers, Ms. Adrian Kay, Ms. Dahlia Rodriguez, Mr. Michel, uh, and we have workshops tomorrow. We took a bus tour of the district to the staple of many teacher orientation programs, and we had a great time this afternoon. Uh, and we'll take uh, former president Sarah Jones leading the bus tour. She's done 
for several years now. Thank you, Sarah. And um, we're excited to finally get going. Our teachers will be back with us on Thursday for our Independence Conference Day. Um, I want to thank um, Mr. Papert for all of his hard work uh, on everything before, but in really helping us to finally get ahead of the curve on construction. As the community knows, and certainly the board, we've been working to get ahead of the bond project and with Mr. Hall um, and our custodial and maintenance crew as well. We've been finally ahead of the curve. While there are some punch items, uh, punch list items left, we will definitely see a difference in our libraries being open in our elementary school, high school front entrance being open, still some things being added, but ready to go. Uh, and that's where the elementary school finished. So, of course, in North Shore Nature, we'll be talking about the next construction projects uh, in upcoming board meetings. Um, just a reminder to our community, our first day of school is September 3rd. Our back to school nights are coming up very quickly. Uh, middle school back to school night is next week, the first week of school, Thursday, uh, September 5th. The elementary school is Thursday, uh, September 12th. And high school on Wednesday this year, September 18th. And homecoming is early too, Saturday. Uh, September 21st. Uh, this summer, too, uh, Dr. McCary, uh, Vice President um, Colosiopo, and I have been talking about alumni efforts and uh, we want to centralize an alumni group uh, for North Shore graduates. We'll be working on that. You'll be hearing more about that throughout the year. We're excited for that. And one last item I want to mention because we haven't had a meeting since on um, July 30th, Tuesday, July 30th. The Rockefeller Institute uh, was doing a study of foundation aid in public schools. I uh, held a hearing at uh, Middle School, and um, there were hearings across the state. I had the opportunity to speak for a couple of minutes. Mr. Pappas joined me, and we really spoke uh, with the emphasis of district thinking, uh, states thinking about districts are losing money because of uh, changing infrastructure and energy and not to forget us, uh, and the state's responsibility in, in for those changes and a very easy solution in making it up just through the foundation made a formula for those districts affected. Um, so we'll uh, keep track of that as well as we move into the next year and our coming efforts as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. We've been busy all summer and as everybody else who's been here all summer, um, and we appreciate all of that. So this meeting is sort of an important meeting because it sets the stage the rest of the year. Our regular business is going to be about district goals, so we'll start there. Um, we're also going to be talking about the board meeting topics, and I assume there's going to be overlap with the, with the meetings and the goals. We can sort of do them together, I think, and we can let our central office team determine whether something meets the rising to the level of the district goal, or will just be a district topic, or will will not be discussed at all. Wah, wah. <laughs> All right. Who would like to start tonight? Ah, oh, Vice President Colosiopa. I've spent many hours in Florida. And many more to come. Not many. <laughs> um, okay, so so like you said, I kind of have a mishmash of the goal with the board topics also together, so take what you want out of it. <laughs> um, I, I would like to see the continuation of the progress of the North Shore journey. I think it encompasses so much of what we do and what we want to do moving forward. It's an amazing strategic plan, and I think it should be refined yearly as we learn more about students' experience and how best to keep them engaged and learning. The journey also includes the shared value, value outcomes aligned in every experience category, and they have been and continue to be embedded in all we do. I've been reading the book that you sent Practicing in search of understanding the case for constructivist classrooms. And so, students. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't finish it, but I have been reading it. And I see so much of what you suggest in the book in, in what we are already doing, already entrenched in our teaching and learning. And it's just, it's so nice to see it. And just so confirming, you know, that we are teaching in such, you know, such a, a progressive and, um, you know, evidence-based successful way for our students. I, the whole notion that students can be high-performing, great test takers because they're memorizing and regurgitating information without really understanding what they've learned is, it's just so interesting to me and, and such a problem in the way this country educates our children. And 
And I, I see that in myself. That's exactly how I got through school. Is <laughs> you know, I was successful at just doing that. I, I had had the opportunities that our students have in authentic learning. I wonder what I would come if I <laughs> if I had those opportunities. Um, and and I love that they're trying to rectify that with authentic learning, project based learning, and student constructed knowledge. The one thing I'd love to see more of this year and moving forward is interdisciplinary learning. One thing I noticed, Dr. Dean, you sent us a board post back in 2013, which I really appreciated. It was interesting to see the trajectory of the goals. I noticed that in earlier years, there's always a reference to which policies would be reviewed in that year. And it seemed like for what, some reason that fell off. I'm not sure if that's something we want to add back into our goals to ensure we're on track for policy review. I'll leave that up to you. I just thought it was an interesting change. Um, I'm hoping to see more of the special education review update. You know, I think that your review was extremely comprehensive. You, you sent us a timeline a few weeks ago that included the detailed plan actions for each month and an end of year survey and report on the progress of the Special Education Action Plan. So I'm hoping, if possible, I'd really like to see the update as a board meeting topic and would love to hear updates throughout the year. I think you had said June of 25, so I'm wondering, even though we did it last year, if we can have an update in June, possibly. Um, technology, the information you've shared so far from the technology committee is extremely interesting. I think you're, you're going to share a white paper with us, if I remember correctly, and That's correct. I didn't miss that. Yeah, we should have that time for the next board meeting uh, on the 19th of September. Great, great. I'm really interested in the results of the work that the committee's done. I think that, you know, I, I mean, you can't open a newspaper or listen to the news without thinking something about finding cell phones or weighing the pros and cons of the age restrictions on apps. So, I, you know, I do want to, to find what our plan is regarding screens, Chromebook, cell phone use, AI, et cetera. Um, I do think communication and community engagement was such a huge success this year. I still do feel like it's always evolving, and I love that you're working on the North Shore Alumni Network. Um, I do think we still have to continue to find ways to increase attendance at parent universities, so I think some form of this goal should remain this year. And lastly, financial plans. And so we have the Revenue Generation Committee that ties both goals two and three from last year together. Some outreach. So I would love to see the feedback loop from that committee to the board and how we can help move those ideas forward. Um, I'd also like to see the inclusion of the 2027-28 year and how we plan to protect our schools with another potential revenue law could be over eight million dollars from from the life losses so i think that needs to be part of whatever conversations we're having about budget planning and lastly i'm so sorry that was my last wasn't last this is really lastly um just looking at building ground infrastructure in the year. i know we have some very old septic tanks um i know we're probably going to need a new trap so i would like to continue to receive updates about the needs and how we're Planning to maintain our grounds with the resources we have. And um, I do like the idea of your presentation on the state of our buildings and grounds. I did appreciate that last year. Thank you. Thank you. Rich, would you like to go next? <laughs> I did this a little bit more formally. Um, so I apologize. I bore you. Oh. <laughs> I look at the goals we've had over the past few years, and I appreciate you providing it to us. It's very helpful. Um, and I kind of framed what I looked at for next year in a very similar fashion to what we did last year, because I think the goals that we addressed last year are still goals we need to keep working at. I, I think that we did a good job last year, but I think there's more work to be done. So I I don't know if I read this, I can get into bed here, but I, I went through and did it pretty much in the format that was given. Some of the things that I mentioned, Lisa brought up already, which is, which is fine. But um, 
so if you want, let's go through it as quickly as I can. So the first of all, I have critical housing construction program, which we've done for many years. And I think it's important to do it here. So I put down continued review of the progress of the intellectual journey, mm -hmm. highlighting areas and practices that work particularly well last year and build from them, identify areas or practices that were not particularly fruitful and come up with strategies to rectify or modify them. The second thing under that topic I put down uh, analysis of the ever increasing role that AI is infiltrating in the instruction program and come up with some clear guidelines for faculty and students to follow. Next, we provide more formal strategic instructional approach for all students, particularly our youngest, to see, use, and navigate the double-edged sword of social media. Next, I have critical review and analysis of our K-12 math and science programs with a focus on integration and timely assessments. The reason we put that in is because if you go look at what we've done in the past few years, we've done foreign language, we've done special ed, we did physical education and health, but we did foreign performing arts. So I think math and science would be nice to issue that. Um, for the second goal, strategic budget and financial planning, uh, review the commission report prepared by Joe Dugo and put into motion for action those recommendations that the board deems reasonable and responsible. Budgetary efficiency that will not have a negative or significant negative impact on the successful work to the district. The third is thoroughly assess and prioritize capital needs. Make any reasonable possible effort to budget uh, for them accordingly within the constraints of the district's revenue. Next, I have continued to seek both short and long term use of uh, source sources. Continue to actively search for grants from open sources, which we could qualify for. Just tilt your uh, just if you tilt it the down two way it'll be sorry. Right. It's a it's a balance act because I can't see that. <laughs> um, so I put down it enhanced community engagement and communication. Uh, first thing I put down is continue to encourage and foster partnerships with community stakeholders and organized groups to support students and school programs. The second thing I put down is the district continued to collaborate with and support parent groups and community organizations with a common goal of improving the educational experience of all of our students. And the third thing I put down is continue to work towards greater clarity and sensibility of district communications with all community stakeholders. And that's it. That was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to go to this side. Maria. Okay. I actually watched cold calling today. So I'm going to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> I actually watched our, uh, a year ago. I watched the video of the meeting a year ago where we talked about goals. And I was almost forgotten last year. So it's nice that you actually, yeah, you said it was, oh. it was you first. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, um, my back to the mishmash uh, approach that Lisa established 
but with thanks to Rich for being so organized. Um, I also did a review and really loved seeing the last uh, more than 10 years of goals. It was interesting, and I, I did pick up at least one thing from there. I have to thank Betty for that. Uh, everybody, thank you, Dave. Everybody, <laughs> yeah, well done. Thank you, Betty. That's great. Uh, not to mention uh, the list you put in your date, Chris, you know, also really covered the base. It's beautiful. Um, so I'll you know, some things just repeat, but um, I'll run through it anyway. So I personally feel, um, you know, while every and so several of the next things fall under that. Um, I do think finalizing, as Rick mentioned, uh, Um, I would love to see us uh, have a goal of developing some of the really creative ideas that came down from the Generation Committee. Um, I think there were some um, terrific, powerful, creative brains on it, and I'd love to see that. I'd love to see more people on it and that kind of work continuing, but so some of it may be slowly starting to come to fruition or setting the ground for it. Um, I thought it Useful. I know we've done this in the past, so that probably exists, but having some kind of list of unfunded mandates and perhaps specifically pursuing grants to cover those, um, including at the federal level. Um, I owe you uh, a report from the, uh, the meeting I sat in on with uh, one of uh, Congressman Swazi's uh, aides. Uh, it was excellent and uh, a really good contact and a follow up to, to feedback. But I think that there is, we've done such tremendous work at the state level, and I think if we could kind of focus some of that energy at the federal level, it might pay off, um, pun intended. Uh, I do think we should look definitely at establishing a capital reserve. Um, I would uh, love to see if you can stand it, that continued um, presentation, the way you did it, I think it was actually a whole three-part approach to your presentations about the budget and its development. You had an early meeting about the challenges that really set the stage beautifully. And um, I know that it was a tremendous amount of work for you and Jamie and Camaro to put all this together. They were really valuable, I thought, through the year um, as also communication tools. Um, one of the other, one of the things that I specifically picked up from the uh, previous years of goals that I should have thought of my own, but um, was the do, laying out the specific goal for board policy. Review. I thought that would be we kind of um, what's the diplomatic word? We didn't quite stay on a schedule uh, in the past years maybe but certainly the last year where we because we dealt with things that felt like emergency policies. I think it would be great if we could sort of set a goal on that and perhaps I noticed that I think it was maybe seven years ago there was a, a compliance review done would be useful. Um, you know how well are we are we in compliance even outside of we, we t I was hoping to target you know getting through the two thousands but if we wanted to be really at just looking at them all to see if there were any other emergencies that we should deal with. Um, I loved the, um, you know, what's been the parent universities. I think that that as a uh, as continuing community education opportunities is a really important thing and that, you know, trying to identify high interest topics to engage younger families whose children are not yet enrolled would be a great um, thing to do, getting those folks uh, to understand uh, the value of this of our schools before they even before they even think they need to worry about it, um, that'll be a challenge because, of course, it's just we you know. I know I have to do it for myself. When my daughter was young; it was sort of the last thing in my mind was going over the bed meeting. But you know, just kind of hearing hearing about some of the things that really affect their lives is, is great. It's the way we built off of the Viking uh, welcome. Flat. This past year was great. Get some more engagement there. Um, I would love to see um, 
a revisiting of uh, non-competitive athletic opportunities, such as badminton and the and the um, and the uh, current craze of pickleball. I think these are these are two areas. I'm sure there are others where you know the kids who are not going out for teams um, would still be really appreciative of having activities like that. You know, whether it's a club or something that could be. And I think that there are. I know of at least one person in the community who would volunteer to be a teacher. So you know, of, um, that I think would be great. Uh, and finally, I'd love to see us start. I hesitate to put this out because it's a Debbie Downer kind of thing, but um, I think we need to have on our radar planning for this pandemic. Um, there are rumblings all over the news about impacts, and it uh, feels to a little bit like it's looming as a potential issue, and it just would be a good thing to sort of get ahead of thinking about things that worked COVID-19, which we did incredibly well, and developing plans that could be put into action quickly if we if we needed them. There are, you know, I think the first case in, in uh, Europe was just discovered. And, um, so I will leave it at that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. David, you want to go ahead? Sure. Uh, thank you, my fellow trustees, those who go, those who are about to um, and I'm going to Betty sharing the document because uh, it was very, very helpful and instructive. Um, it was really well presented, and it uh, tripped up many, many lakes of memories. Uh, but some of them before I, I was on the board. And I noticed maybe kind of back up until 2017, uh, we really went very detailed, specific academic areas that we're looking at. Um, and it was sort of migrated away from that somewhat conceptual ideas, which is definitely want to have a balance, but I was going to mention um, something that Rich touched on, math and science, and I thought almost, you know, we do a lot of presentations and we do a lot of analyses that are all incredibly helpful. I think that one of the things that But I'm going to give it a name, uh, shoring up, sure. um, and I think those areas specifically we've identified specific places where our students maybe aren't performing as well on some of the examinations. Um, some of the areas it could be really any, you know, it could be, it could be you know, we have so much success, but some maybe aren't, you know quite having success. Academic is what I was what I was thinking that the specific areas where we're maybe having trouble recruiting faculty. Uh, where we're having difficulty with student performance, those are really something we, we focus on. The things that we do, and I'm really proud of, is we're not afraid to show areas that need improvement. Um, and I think doing that says a lot about that we have that we have that that, that confidence. Uh, beyond that, um, the continuing work, capital projects, the education, the funding. I think that really meshes with you know, community engagement. Um, I really want to hear so much more from the community. Maybe organize working groups that can have us give that kind of feedback. Surveys are so helpful, uh, but they're also different about getting together in person um, uh, and then reporting back to us. Uh, so I think that can be helpful, not just in general for community engagement and awareness of what we're doing, uh, but on the specific topics we're working on. Uh, obviously, the plan for how we're going to do the next capital uh, projects, um, identification of projects. We've obviously got a list that we were given that is, as usual, Far more than we could ever possibly afford, but winnowing that down takes so much input from the internal stakeholders, but also from the community, which ultimately is um, is who is you know the party to whom we answer, um, and other than the children that we serve, <laughs> um, we uh, the policy I have a policy review um, we used to do it in thirds. I think that was efficient and potentially rushed. Uh, there are nine sections of that policy manual. Not suggest that we go back to a strict get to a third of them. The first year I did it, it was like I came out of that meeting, you know, I just <laughs> getting paper done, those papers so fast. Uh, but we did cover a lot. So we make sure we're comprehensive. We go through them. Um, we want to make sure they get updated and looked at on a regular basis with explicit discrete goals for each year that we can that we can hit. Um, 
as I said, the community engagement is important. Uh, something that Trustee Mosca mentioned, the 27-20 planning, uh, is something we really have to, um, to work on. That will be a goal for the year, as opposed to the presentation will okay, culminate with a presentation. But I think working to bring people in um, to discuss what this is, or even going to them, a parent, which I think is so important. So parents and family, and members of the community as well, who have kids in the school, know what's happening. Um, and not just specific budget year, but that long-term approach. Because I think for life, uh, which is going on for so long, and I think we as a board felt we were planning for it, dealing with it, looking at things for so many years in advance, I think too many folks in the community feel like we weren't prepared or just kind of came to us. And I think the more we can engage people along the way, just, you know, you don't feel media or locked out so you deal with it with a little speck on the telescope. And so that's the that's the approach. Um, for board topics specifically, I would like to see just somewhere I'd like to see an official live report from the committee itself, which is us reporting the committee work. But there's so many people, uh, members of our community who work really hard. I'd like to see the board hear from them what they do and not just from us because it is um, it is a community made up of our, of our residents. Um, um, Maria said, again, that the approach to budget awareness, choices, and obstacles, and hurdles that we face throughout the year was really well laid out. Uh, Dr. C, I'd like to continue that. Uh, and just finally, the thing that I would like to try to at least propose as a discussion topic for the board is how we as a district approach current events. I am very concerned that it is such a hot topic that we just don't necessarily approach it in a way that prepares our kids. And so I'd like to report on how we approach it, what the student experience is at the various different levels. Um, I feel like you have us consider that uh, because I, you know, whether we, we all come from places of perspective, it's something that's very hard to engage, um, but as an academic community, we owe it to our kids to give them the tools to be able to do that. I'd like to learn more about how we do that specifically. Um, and the outcome that it brings for our, for our students. That's what I've got. All right, thank you. And you can draw a metaphor and fill the key metaphors. Thank you. Yeah. Yep, good. Yeah. Yep, everyone lay back the tape. Jimmy, you're up now. Um, thank you. And I don't think I can add much more than you guys have already added. I, I think we have four or five years of goals here now. So I think, uh, good luck, Chris. Um, I, I think that everything you brought up is, is, has a financial implication and a time implication. And so I think we have to be careful with the amount and, and, and what we're doing, but the long-term financial uh, implications of all these items. So that's all I would say right now. At least that. Well, I'm certainly very interested in all the things that were mentioned and would, would welcome all the discussions and appreciate the thought and um, ideas that were brought. I, I agree with everything. Um, with respect to budget planning, which of course is important, and, and I appreciate the way uh, that this was discussed from different angles by different trustees, I also think there's kind of a lack of clarity even at this day about even just the, the procedure and the decision makers, and, you know, with respect to this group that we talk about, um, they said that we can capture some clarity so that we can communicate clearly with the community. I, I, I would love that as a goal. Um, I, um, I do really appreciate looking through the previous years of goals. That was really uh, helpful. I thought, I thought it was interesting how often equity came up in the conversation. And I, I feel that, you know, two years, three years that I've been on this board, I know that there's still an issue with equity, but it really has been part of our conversation. So I don't know where it, I, I don't know how that fits into this whole conversation. I certainly boards of 12 years ago didn't have to think about technology and some of the many challenges that we're faced with. Um, but I, I am still very interested in, you know, in, in, in hearing that conversation and developing that concept and understanding where we are. Just ask equity in terms of what? Um, well, it talks about from lots of different perspectives, right? There were different years where 
focus on different equity, but it was a conversation. That, uh, it was it was a topic in many several years. I, I understood it as um, socioeconomic, racial equity and inclusion, or maybe uh, uh, yeah. That that was my impression from reading them. Did you get a different impression? I was just curious what you meant. So many different like, gender equities, SES yeah. equity, racial equity. I, I was thinking in terms of racial equity and diversity and inclusion. And that brings me to another point, which is a little bit further down, which um, the, the interdisciplinary work that another trustee, who might have been uh, Vice President Colosi, so no, forgive me, but um, I'm, I'm really interested in understanding, and this is probably um, more of a presentation than a, than a annual goal. Uh, there was a parent university about normalizing differences, how that crossing into some of the other disciplines, um, and it was certainly presented to us today as, in, as a as a entering middle schooler that that's going to be priority uh, in, in, in this building. I know being a parent, um, but that to me it, it's a little bit speaks to what Steve Ludmore talked about too in terms of how we handle current events, how we're talking as a community about complicated issues. Um, I think. I'm interested in, in developing that more and understanding how that is crossing through multiple buildings in, in age-appropriate ways and, and developing that um, and, un and understanding that kernel because it, I do think it's so, so helpful and so important. Um, so I also picked up the policy, as you know, having been on the policy committee, that was very interesting. I would add also, and I don't know how we would do this, but I'm so, you know, we made a major policy shift that was a little bit controversial in my tenure here on the board. And I'm so interested to hear how that has maybe influenced our hiring practices and, and ways that our policy changes may, maybe are helpful or not helpful. Um, I, I, again, I don't want to qualify the question, but I have. In the tutoring teaching policy. Yeah, that was what I was thinking of specifically. I, I don't, I don't, I got a, you know, I, I've heard from, you know, anecdotally, that it was impactful in a beneficial way. Um, I'm not certain. Did you want to ask? I don't want to ask. Oh, I, oh um, no, I, just that the impact of who it's perhaps the change has enabled us to hire pre change. Yeah, we could certainly. It, it's helpful, you know, has there been any unintended consequences? There was concern about that. Perhaps yes, perhaps no. Like I, I'm we not. We do the right thing. Yeah, we do the right thing. Thank you for understanding, you, President Makari. Um, I am interested in. There's a lot of talk in, in Nisbeta, this um, Nisbeta about the change in the culture in teaching that it's harder to find talent, and that there's really, um, you know, that jobs are. That there's just generally across the board in teaching <clears throat> that that's that's a, or an issue that is coming up, and I'm interested. You know, a similar analogy to the the, the meteor before it's it, putting it against the sun. I'm interested in what we're doing as a district to um, keep our staff happy, to make sure our communications are super strong, to and to maintain this excellence that we have engendered and to continue to attack, attract the best talent, and not just by you know having competitive salaries, but the culture of appreciation that we could maybe foster or ways that you know our communication, given that we have building leaders who are relatively new to our district, and this is something I've, I've mentioned before, but just how, how are we really in making the leaders the best leaders they can be and how that's trickling down through our buildings and making sure that for us, it will never be a problem to attract and retain the best the best talent. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of an, a new conversation, but I keep, I keep reading about it. So I thought I'd bring it up in this forum. Um, so in internal communications, team building, talent retention, it's not an issue. I, I'm not even suggesting that. So um, um, I interrupt you, yeah. but it, it is even for districts like North Shore or Tri-States, you know, cohort districts that are higher performing, you know, districts where people want to work, it is getting harder, you know, for us too. So I think there's a lot of merit in that. I just want to say, yeah. Thanks for validating that. that kernel. <laughs> Not that you need to be too, but I just wanted to say. Um, 
this, um, we, we had this really sort of late, uh, landmark meeting with the business community last year as part of our community engagement. And I really want to make sure that that gets developed and that it wasn't just a one-off great conversation because I keep hearing that there is genuine interest in the business community for integrating, for supporting, for, you know, all of the different ways that we can, and, there, and, and it actually speaks to the interest of our students and that we were able to add another business class to the high school. So, so these are authentic learning experiences that we could um, foster based on this just little kernel. And I, I just want to make sure that thread doesn't get lost in, this, in the sauce, so to speak. Not good at that. I can't speak as well as Trustee Lenmore. Um, the community. Uh, I. This probably is more of a, a lack concern or interest, but um, and I agree. It would be very interesting to hear. And and beyond lack, all of the people who serve our community um, I, I should be invited to present and to to. Think Um, and presenting their thoughts and uh, directly to us. I think that that was a really great idea on behalf of, um, that Trustee Ledmar had. Um, I, I think in terms of like, where are the holes in our legislative relationships and what can we do to build those? Maybe, uh, you know, a better relationship with generally the town of Booster Bay, for example, or, um, you know, we, we have particularly good relationships with some of our legislators and maybe weaker with others. And so what can through all of our all of our multi-pronged channels to kind of build those relationships because I do think in terms of what our, we're confronting those relationships are going to be really essential you know in the next several years um, so the, the multi-pronged planning for that that's what I mean by multi-pronged planning for that 20 the, the, the clip that we keep talking about is it 2027 thank you I don't want to misspeak um, I loved something that was done last year in particular that I wanted to encourage for future, which is having student voice in the presentations that we were getting. I thought that that was really so wonderful and moving, particularly like the extracurricular uh, presentation that we had and that movie that we saw. And it, those are very memorable to me and very impactful to me as a trustee. Um, and I think they're very, it's very important for the kids who are able to engage in that way. And, and so to the extent that we can continue student voice, I wanted to um, encourage and, and um, that, just give that feedback. Um, I think those were my notes. So thank you for the time. Um, I appreciate it. All right, now I get to go. Um, so I kind of mix mine up, I guess, a little bit in terms of the district goals and the board meetings. Um, I guess in terms of the goals, I really am interested in the authentic learning. Um, I know it's it's been all over. I've been reading it that um, New York State is looking for schools to serve as mentors for authentic learning. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, mentors for authentic learning to other schools. And, and so I don't know. At first I thought, oh man, that'd be great if we we should be the mentor to another school and they would give you money to do that. But then also maybe maybe it's time for us to be mentored by somebody else who's who might be doing it differently, not better, differently than we are. Um, I'm very interested in continuing um, this sort of alumni community partnerships. I think that that is definitely an area that we can branch out in that sort of is that we, we haven't done enough there. I'm also really interested in what we discussed at um, the college counseling meeting, this idea of can we communicate who we are better to the colleges? And then I started to think maybe it involves a sort of greater uh, overall branding of the district. I think last year we had a goal where um, we really were going to improve our social media and our communication, which I really think we did. I, I think we went leaps and bounds. Maybe the next step is looking more at sort of how do we package the school to the colleges um, with sort of an overall branding in a multimedia way. Special ed, I know we did the review last year. I feel like there's still work to be done. So follow up on that um, I think is important. 
I would also love if we did a sort of audit on whether accommodations were being followed. I know we talked about that in um, the special ed review, but I don't think we ever actually did it, if I'm correct, where you would just sort of randomly pull IEPs, see if the accommodations are being followed. Um, I've mentioned this a few times, so I'm gonna mention it again, because I don't think we've done it. I'm very interested in um, the non-teaching units and what we can do to develop maybe greater relationships with them. Um, whether that is putting them on a regular schedule where we have sort of a little open town hall with them or reaching out to them in some kind of outreach way. Continuing our efforts at new revenue streams. Um, but really, I think over the last two years, we've had so many ideas. Um, now really sort of, um, really sort of like, reducing it to what gives us the biggest bang for our buck, right? Like we're, sometimes we're doing things that involves like allocating a lot of human capital resource, um, what maybe doesn't bring in a lot of money and sort of looking at what can we do to get um, a lot of money with a little amount of effort. For example, the um, movie, TV, location, scout idea. Um, in terms of the board meetings, I, and I think we did this, like, I think it was really amazing last year. I want our meetings to continually reflect what makes us us and for them to be progressive, to involve the students. Um, last year, you, may, you really heard us and you brought in students from all different departments, right? All the life skills program and the ELL program. And to me, those were the best meetings. It was amazing to bring in students that really reflect our entire student population. So I would love this, this year to not only continue that, but also to continue our mission to look at these sort of niche programs, right? We looked at the BOCES program. We looked at the life skills program. We looked at the ELL program. What other programs are part of our district that this board needs to learn about? Capital reserve conversation, I think, would be important. Um, also, the pre-K program, we have not done a presentation on that yet, right? And so now it's been like two years. Maybe it would be a good time to do that. Um, I think that might also be interesting to sort of look um, forward into the future about how that program can grow, how we can find more space for it, how we can find budget for maybe playground space for these kids. Um, and then the last thing, which maybe is aspirational, um, is I would love to have a meeting that was a student town hall meeting. And those are my thoughts. All right, thank you. So you will come back to us, right, next meeting, and we'll see how you wrote your district goals. We'll tell you to do it differently, and then you'll go back <laughs> again. Um, but that's collaboration. Okay. Any other comments or questions or anything that anybody forgot? Now we're going to move to our board committees, and I've thought of lots of different ways that I wanted to do this um, to see how we could do it sort of easily and in a fair way. And I thought we would start, this was my idea. I'm gonna go around um, and have everyone give me their, we, we basically, I forgot how many I counted, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 committees. So it's a lot of committees. And we're looking for two people per committee, but we can also have three if it's in high demand. And as you all know, we can't have four because it's a violation of open meetings law. I thought we would, I would go um, person by person and each of you tell me your first choice committee. So everybody gets at least one that they absolutely is their first choice. Okay, so hopefully this works out. Okay, um, so I guess we'll do it in terms of longest serving. We'll start there. So David, that's you. What is your first choice? Uh, for me, it'd be construction steering. Okay, so we're gonna put that in. Okay, next is Rich. It could be 
a new committee. You don't have to stick to the same. All right, so that is okay, perfect. All right, I am next, and I'm going to pick wellness. Um, okay. Lisa? Yeah. I'm going to pick athletics, but I'm going to put a plug in for construction steering too because I do think they're related and I'd like to be on both this year. And Marianne was on both, and now we don't have anyone who's yeah, on both. Yeah, th this is a little like there's a history here for anybody <laughs> listening. There's a history. Okay, Maria. Black. Okay, so we thank you for your service there, Maria. I don't think anyone's going to. I was wondering what would happen if I didn't say it. <laughs> yeah. I was going to call you this week. Um, Lisa Cashman. Um, I'm, I'm pretty flexible about my committees. I, it, it's hard to walk away from construction and steering when you've lived through two years of construction. And, like, you know, you want to see it come to fruition. So I think that's my, my first choice. Um, you know. I think because that, that is a committee that you need. It, it's. There's those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, that that is good. Okay, excellent. Um, and then um, Max, uh, I'd like to be on athletics. Okay, so, okay, Jimmy. So that's closing out athletics. We got three people on athletics. Okay. Then I think we'll go. Um, should we go for the? You want to go second round? Should we do that? Or maybe we should just go through the committees yeah, and, and do just it see way. who that, wants to be on them. And that if was it's my more plan. than three, then. okay. So athletic is closed out. Audit, we are all on. Board policy. Um, who would like to be on this committee? I would like to continue. It's Stay on it. Fantastic. Oh, you guys are great. Okay. So Jimmy, did you? I know we did you. Oh, all right, that would be great. I think that's excellent. Um, okay, so that's good. Yeah, he can have mine. Um, so I'm a little sad about it. I do feel like it was a bonding experience for all of us. Um, <laughs> community budget forum. Now, this is not really an official committee, correct? This was just sort of we were doing this. It's more of a liaison. Yeah. I'm assuming. So let's let's go back. Let's do that one at the end. Um, construction steering committee. If anyone does any anyone want to speak up on this one. <laughs> I know. Sort of wants know. to take Marianne. I, I think role. if, if uh, Cola yeah. is on it, we have yeah. three. All right, we're good. So that we're going to close out, and that that really works because this this is a time intensive committee, right? Okay. It's one. It's the same as yeah. all the other ones. It's one meeting okay. per month. All right. All right. Good. Um, health and safety. Rich. Okay. I honestly, it does not work with my work schedule anymore. So I don't know if anybody else would be would be interested in this one. How, it's a daytime meeting? It's um, Wednesdays at 9, and it is exactly an hour. They run it very quickly. Mr. Yeah, Mr. he's Mr. here. Paul right there is yeah. one of the best meeting facilitators ever. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a relatively easy one. Are you willing to do it, Jimmy? Perfect, thank you. Okay, so Jimmy is there. Lack? I, I would like to remain on. Excellent. But I also would suggest that uh, this, you know, if someone's interested, this is a good committee to have three folks on. Anyone have a burning desire to be on that? I think it's so important. I just, I can't take on, I know, I know the weightiness of it and I, it's not. Well, this is not, what I think. Since we already have two, let's go back to this at the end. Let's go. Will you do it? Okay. All right, good. So you can say you're already doing it. But yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, that's done. Okay, excellent. Um, IEP, I'm willing to stay on that. I'll stay on it too, okay. unless somebody else wants it. Okay. Do you like to read 500 IEPs? It's for you. Um, the uh, Revenue Generation Committee. That when do you guys meet? Are gonna? I'm going to send a whoever the trustees are, yeah. and I will do this with Community Budget Forum as well. Um, I'm going to send an email of possible calendaring. So we're going to do them all in advance this year versus one meeting at a time. Um, and it would be once a month, uh, probably in the evenings virtually. Virtually? Yeah. Okay. I'd love to stay on 
I mean, I, I'm sort of interested, I just, as president, there are lots of extra meetings, so I'm a little nervous about committing too much. I'm comfortable staying on that committee. Okay, you like it, Dave? I do. Okay. I I'm, do. I'm gonna put myself on, and then I'll, I'll, I'll make what I can make, depending on when it is. Um, the review of the attorney bills, I don't mind doing that. Okay. Um, Andrew, can we yeah. just go back for revenue yeah, yeah. generation? I, I can, I can, it. no, I, I like you alternate. and I can, t yeah, maybe we could just okay alternate and okay. share that one. And then, um, wellness. I really do like that committee. I'd like to stay on it unless, well, there's only two now, right? Yeah. So two. Anybody else? Monday morning. Yeah, I think with lack, I'm kind of, so it's like two and one. So the only other one that we're going to go back to is the community budget forum, if anybody is interested in I that. Stay on that. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to? I mean, it's not an official. It's a, it's a nice one for, um, like, we've, I've done it for two years now, and I feel like it's, it's sort of, um, it's a good way to kind of engage with people who are interested in the budget. Um, Exactly for the community engagement piece, it's very valuable. Yes, um, but I feel like I've given what I can give to that committee. <laughs> give to all of it. <laughs> Happy to try that. All right, all right. That's a nighttime meeting, Jimmy. Virtual, right? Chris, you're going to move that to a virtual one? Probably? I think so, um, just because okay. of revenue generation working well that way and our budget meetings really working better virtually. And so is there um, anybody else speak now um, that would like to be on a committee that we that missed an opportunity? Okay, all right, this is amazing. And I do wanna point out to the community how much work all of this is. So most of the community members, and I'm sure no one's listening, but most of the community members just think we have this meeting um, but of course, that is not true. We have many, many, many other meetings over the course of the week. Um, so thank you to everyone for um, volunteering to do more. Okay, um, so let's keep going. It is now time for comments from the public. I will open up the floor for comments from the public. If you'd like to say anything, please come down. An observer I will now close the floor for comments to the public. Okay, great. Um, we're going to do action nine, the approval of the side letter um, with the North Shore Schools Federated Employees concerning the creation of the IB coordinator position and action 10 personnel, which is A through Q as well as action 11, which is the approval of a resolution pursuant to education law section 913. Is there a motion? Motion. I heard a second. Questions, comments? Yes. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I'd, act, I'd actually like to move to separate nine from the others. Um, I'd like to, uh, I have particular feelings about nine and I don't want it to lead into my decision for the others. So is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of separating them? Thank you. Okay, so now, do I have a motion on action nine? Second. Second. Okay, questions or comments? By the way, I did that. I did that nicely. You did that yeah, very well. I, you know. Didn't I know, I got excited. <laughs> um, is there questions or comments on action nine? Go ahead. I, I completely understand the, the reason why this position exists, and I understand that there is a fair amount of work involved with it. I have a couple of problems with the side letter, one being I don't feel that the amount of work should be compensated necessarily based upon a percentage of somebody's salary. I think we have X amount of 
things to take care of. So I would have been more comfortable with a reasonable dollar amount for a stipend as opposed to assigning it as a percentage. The, the second piece of it is I, I feel like I think it's a tremendous, not a tremendous, but it's a significant amount of money to spend at this particular juncture. And my own personal beliefs are that we should be sort of thinking about going in a different direction. Any other questions? Thank you, Rich. Any other questions or comments? I had a question. Was it, is it a stipend and the two periods of release time? Yes, um, and this is how it was structured uh, last year, how it's been structured historically uh, as well. I wasn't, because initially I wasn't sure if it was a stipend in lieu of the, the release time, but it's, I saw that somewhere else, that it was in lieu of release time, but it's not, it's both. It's both, that's correct. It's to allow not, uh, no diminution in, in, the, in the counseling uh, load right that's correct right. yes yeah Chris just so I can clarify the overall assignation of the duties of the IB and the AP um, and dual enrollment have been reduced since we had an individual who was solely responsible for that that's right when um, Carrie Titone uh, Dr. Titone had moved on to another district um, that was two years ago so we moved to eliminate that position we originally tried to combine it with our director of mathematics position and we were having trouble recruiting. Uh, we had made a decision to go to the pure math director position. Uh, and then um, we created the side letter. Mr. Shea had been the one uh, to do it uh, just for the IB. In terms of AP, Miss Imperial has taken on that work. Um, both of them have done, done good work, um, but that's, that was the evolution of that. Also, just in terms of the of the of the overall dollar allocation, it's not just that it is less for those two individuals and these overages that we're assigning, or the allocation of one of those individuals is time, but also it's the elimination of a position. So there's no benefits, there's no extra retirement in perpetuity. So that's all a savings when we do it this way. That's correct. Right. So the the salary of that administrator, the benefits, um, this is technically budgeted for within the overage budget, and this falls within uh, what was budgeted uh, for that. Um, that's part of how we structured it, why we structured it that way last year. Um, I, I'll just note one thing that's beyond Trustee Lemar's question, but that we, we do see this as a temporary measure. It's a one-year side letter, um, and we're looking for, um, there are other options uh, that other districts do. For example, Locust Valley, you know, having a teacher do that work as part of their schedule. Um, it was hard with the cuts that we made, the, all of the retirements that we didn't replace this year to make that work this year. But as we go into the future, that might be something that, that we uh, consider um, for this and or AP supervision. Chris, this may, this may come as a shock or maybe not, but I can't, I can't wait for budget season. I can't wait to see how it's all, <laughs> how it's all gonna, gonna play out. But uh, uh, it's always budget season. It would be just like it, exactly, you know, <laughs> exactly. It's all like right, the kids go. playing I'm sports going. year round. We just do budget year round. <laughs> Does Mrs. Imperial order uh, earn a stipend for the AP position? She does not. That is within her administrative responsibility. All right. Great. Um, any other questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? This is action nine only. Okay, thank you. Against? Okay, thank you. Um, so now we're gonna do action 10. Oh, I gotta put my glasses. Action 10, A through Q, which is personnel, and then action 11, um, which is the approval of a resolution pursuant to education law section 913. Is there a motion? Motion. I heard a second. Questions, comments? All in favor? 
Okay, thank you, and welcome to all our new our new staff. Um, action 12 and 13. Action 12 is district committee appointments. That would be um, Jessica Dillon, Dominic Fortunuto, Brian Hanley, Syra Madad, and Janice Parisi for LAC. And then action 13 is the acceptance of donations. Um, is there a motion? Okay. Um, I know, Maria, you want to point out the donations? I do. I, I actually um, always want to say a huge thank you, but I, I for a moment also want to say a thank you to the new uh, and welcome to the new members of LAC. Um, the newest ones are Sierra Madad and Janice Paris. Um, that is a that is a significant uh, 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 committee, so I'm very happy to have them on, on board. But um, yeah, the donations are just amazing. Um, I, I, I was floored by um, all three of them, but um, the, Mo the Modi family um, in particular seems to have gone way above and beyond. I actually expected Chris, Chris we would love you. wants to put, tell us about that. Sure. Tell us the story, Chris. Yeah, and we did ask Mr. Modi to come this evening. Um, they were unable to come, but it's a great story. Basically, the family was driving by Glenwood Landing School. Um, they saw um, children playing, and they basically decided to send a donation for books and materials and resources for the elementary students. So it's just a, you know, it's very simple. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's, I, I feel like I should have more meat to it. I mean, we did go back and forth, almost like our treasurer contacted Mr. Modi, like, is this like for real almost? Because it was so generous uh, and so amazing and, and so um, such a good example of um, thinking about the common good. In such a just made it look so easy. And didn't it didn't say how much. And it was for ten thousand dollars. I mean, it just very, uh, very impressive and very generous. And and thank you to the Modi family, and Mr. Modi. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. All right. All in favor? Oh, go ahead, David. Motion. Sorry, Thor. That was motion. I just want to also recognize. Specifically, the other two donations, which were also very, you know, very kind and generous for this, from the Sitco family, um, and also the Glenhead PTO, which of course is an agglomeration of different folks who come together to pool their resources, uh, but are still, you know, not the, these are comparisons, of course, but it's also a very sizable five-digit donation uh, to the kids. The, the donation from Mr. Modi just made me realize there are just the appreciation for education and public education and as a foundational block of this country, I think is something that we, I certainly don't want to say take for granted because as you mentioned, we, we spend a lot of time here, <laughs> us doing this, um, both the professionals who are here and all the members of our, of our, of our North Shore team. Um, but I think to see it as something that someone just feels and has moved to contribute in this way um, is particularly moving. And I, it just, uh, they, they would see that and just be like, well, yes, that's what should be going on in this country, and they just want to support it. Obviously, I, I don't know anything about these people. I don't know them at all, but to have the means to do that and to be able to decide to do that is really, um, it's unusual and it's special, but I think it also speaks to a larger current of support for what schools do and bring to this world that I think is worth really, really celebrating and noticing. So I'm glad you did, and I appreciate it. Right. I was just going to say donations that are local make such a huge impact. All right. Um, all in favor. Thank you. Um, action 14, 15, and 16. 14 is the approval to increase school lunch prices. Um, action 15 is the approval of the building level emergency response plans. And action 16 is the approval to dispose inventory. Motion. Second. Thank you. Questions, comments? This is a question. Yes, Ms. Okay. Vice President Colosio. And I apologize, I didn't ask this in advance. So if you don't know the, if you don't have it, it's fine. I was just, the, I had a question about number 15, the um, building level emergency response plans. I was just thinking about the wildfires and the air quality and just wondering, I didn't see that in the response plan. I'm not sure if it falls under another scenario but I, I do wonder if we need now that this seems like a new phenomenon that is happening more often do we need something about 
you know, do we run the HVAC system, the, the I'm sorry, the HEPA, I was thinking of the HEPA right. filters more when that is happening or, you know, what, I have no idea what the right response plan is for that, but I was just thinking we probably need to add that. We did discuss this when this happened at the end of the 2022-23 school year, a little bit internally, uh, and there was conflicting guidance. To your point, there was there were people who said eventually open the windows, uh, then some people then said keep the windows closed, run the filters. So, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Hall, but the the these plans are kind of la laid out by the state, and they're it, it's kind of a hole. I think Trustee Kosov is hitting on a hole here in that it's about specific incidents and events that happen and not about these other admittedly more common phenomena that are now happening, things like that. Um, Mr. Hall, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, John. Oh, yes, you hit it right on the head. Um, it's That's exactly how they formulate them. The state actually, especially this year, right up to several edits Mr. Glennon had to make because it changes uh, re responses to, you know, climate and things going on. But um, it doesn't, even if it's not in the plan, there's nothing stopping us from adding something on our own. Um, the wildfire and the smoke was an interesting one because you have codes that require you to bring in outside air, but when outside air is not, you know, <laughs> healthy for the students, you have to make those decisions, and a lot of them are, are based on uh, what you're seeing at that moment. And a plan is uh, having a boilerplate plan is a good idea for a response, but it, it would be something we would have to adjust to uh, with with each event. Thank you. We'll continue to, to look into that. Yeah. Maria? Um, actually, while, while John, while you're at the podium, um, this may not be a, the appropriate time, so we can just table it. But I'm just put out there, since we were talking about goals, and I mentioned planning for a pan pandemic, theoretically, that is something that those types of plans could be in the could be in that's the, there yeah that is we, there we have a we have our pandemic plan we did okay. at the time okay uh we could always go back to that um you know we have our best practices that work okay. so i should have um, remembered that short of different guidance from the cdc or others we could pull that boilerplate pandemic plan out and, and adjust very quickly um we have a lot of hand sanitizer left right. over Thank a lot you. of things so okay. let's hope we don't get there but uh we can pivot very easily back to okay. one or two practices or or looking at the entire plan to adjust. It's one in advance, but I, I think it's fairly straightforward. The reason we occasionally have to raise our lunch prices is that the lunch program has to be self-supporting, right? And we've got a lot of inflation. That, that is correct. Okay. Uh, it, it has to be self. And also the state periodically puts out um, minimums that because you are being funded by federal uh, and state dollars to free and reduce lunch. They don't want you having lunch prices that are so that are so low um, when they're uh, giving you um, money towards that. So there there are guidelines where the lunch price has to be, and also the increase in prices and the increase of the lunch. And certainly, we have an amazing lunch at uh, North Shore and Food is lunch expensive. program. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. I don't know how you do how you serve that quality elementary school lunch for three dollars and seventy five cents. Three dollars and seventy five cents. Uh, my daughter worked at the Seacliff Beach Cliffside Cafe. Um, uh, yeah, three seventy five. Yeah. If I can add the elation at central office when certain meals are offered and <laughs> and the staff is talking about getting uh, you know planning on getting the meals and bringing them in is it's just it's an amazing <laughs> have a name for it we call it shore dash uh, <laughs> you know, just goes and gets the yeah. meals for everybody sure. one day i was there I was like, what smells so good what did you guys order and they're like we ordered the cafeteria food and it's like wow <laughs> all right so what, while John's there, we should acknowledge that um, we were audited for our safety, um, our safety procedures, and were, were found to be exemplary. And that's you and your team. So you have a lot to be proud of for that. Thank you for your hard work and attention to the safety of our students.
Thank you. Mr. Glennon deserves the lion's share of the thanks for the plans and everything he does uh, for us. He goes above and beyond every day. So I want to acknowledge his hard work. Uh, again, share that the edits and everything that he had to do right up to the last minute, making maps that were required. He did an amazing job. But um, Homeland Security did audit us, as you as you stated, and and found that um, we had a very long list, comprehensive list going into the last bond. We incorporated a lot of that uh, bond work to address those items on that list. I'm happy to say it checked a lot of boxes in Homeland uh, in their, their latest look at us was, was very impressed. Thank you for mentioning that, Lisa. Excellent. All right, all in favor? Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, approval of contract. <coughs> 17 A through E, 18 A through C, which is the approval of change orders, and then 19 A and B, which is the award of transportation bids. Motion. Motion. All right. Uh, questions, comments? All in favor? Excellent. Um, action 20 A through E, which is our approval of special ed consultant agreements, and action 21, which is the approval of the special ed tuition agreement with Henry Viscardi. Is there a motion? <coughs> Thank you. Questions, comments? All in favor? Excellent. I also today want to add in a motion to amend the agenda to add an agenda item at the end of this meeting today. Um, I will read to you the agenda item I would like to add. Um, it's an action, whereas the BOE received an appeal from a decision of the superintendent on a DASA complaint, and whereas the BOE has had a thorough and independent investigation conducted into the matter, and whereas the BOE has reviewed the record of the matter, and now therefore be it hereby resolved that the BOE denies the appeal of the DASA complaint filed on behalf of the student identified by an ID number, which um, we will remain confidential at this meeting. Um, that is the motion, so I'd like so I actually need a motion to add that to the agenda. So do I have a motion? motion. Second. Okay, excellent. Um, questions, comments? Okay, all in favor of adding the motion. Okay, thank you. And now we have to take an action on this motion to approve the motion, okay? to approve the resolution. Thank you, buddy. Um, is, there a uh, is there a motion to approve the revolution? All in favor, right? No, no, no I oh, need a motion, motion first. first. Yeah. Open motion. Discussion. Motion. Second. OK, excellent. All in favor. Did I, what? Wait, this is isn't there a discussion before Oh, me? yeah, sorry. Let's have a discussion. Yeah. Is there a question, comment? It's a very small, two comments. One of them is very small, which is just Betty, thank you for understanding how well this yeah. works. Uh, but number two, uh, you know, being being on the board is obviously we discuss a lot of things, and some are very tricky. But I just want to thank the board for spending the time that we did looking at the specifics of the situation um, and really approaching it with with uh, with your minds and your and your hearts. I appreciate that. Mentioning that. Um, okay. Any other questions, comments? All in favor? Okay, excellent, thank you. So now we will move to unfinished business. Anyone have any unfinished business tonight? David? Uh, I'll be quick, and this is not for response because it's just to lay it out there, we can do it. But it is, uh, and we touched on this a lot in our topics discussion for next year, which is that we do for this year, but we do so much great work with these analyses and every one ends with sort of a next steps. Uh, that we don't always necessarily get back to. So I thought about this. We were in construction steering yesterday, and we talked about the ongoing audit of our physical plant and grounds resulting from the discussion that we called states of our building and grounds, um, of which you've updated the board. You followed through. We're doing all those things. I thought it was so great. It's going to tee us up for the process that we have ahead of us. Um, there's a couple I just wanted to mention from previous 
discussions that I'd just like to kind of put out there. So obviously not to be discussed now, but we could put a bow on them hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, one is in 23, we looked at committees and there were just a couple of committees that need specific terms and term limits um, for our volunteers and maybe some bylaws, audit and steering com and construction steering or two that I have in mind. Um, number two, uh, athletic policy committee, which I, Tough one to get on this year. Uh, I, I wish I gamed the system better and use that use that as my as my first choice. But um, one of the things that I really have been looking for and would like to see addressed by that committee this year um, is an updated parent code of conduct and policy, minimizing or even eliminating parent involvement on the field or on the courts in school sports. I think that's a problem. There was an article that I saw recently about uh, the difficulty in finding officiants for these events because they just don't want to deal with what goes on. And it is not good for our student experience. We vet our professionals who are our coaches. I'm not going go to on, go on, but uh, it's really important that we have a specific policy on that. Um, and then the third is this one that Andrea mentioned specifically, which is about the next steps and seeing the school profile review and improvement about the presentation of how we look as, a, as, a, as an amazing school district um, with such unique qualities to be reflected properly in that school profile. Thank you. Any other finished business? Okay, any new business? Quick, 20, 20, 20, 30 seconds, which I wasted five saying that. Um, there's lots of talk about the impact of potential new development in our area and how it will affect our tax base. We do have one specific recent example, which is the Glen Harbor condos on Shore Road in Glenwood Landing. So I'd like to ask for new business that the business office, if to the best they can, and not immediately, but over time, report on how these properties were taxed, how it played into the adjusted base proportions, and if there was any related shift. I think it's a good instructive lesson in how it may happen for future development. We, we have one. Let's see what the county did. I still think I made 20 seconds. Is that information out at this point? People are living there, right? So they're living they're, there. They're getting like their mail at the same PO box as me. Yeah. 85%. Yes. Now, it's not one big unit. There's, you know, 30 right. out of the 40, whatever it is, individual units that have been sold. So it makes it tricky. And I apologize, Jamie. But um, I think it'll help us in our, in our planning. It'll be an adventure, yes. Thank Very you. Good. All right. Any other questions? All right. So I, I, we could adjourn the meeting, but I believe there was also a suggestion if you'd like to. Make, I just want to make a motion to go into executive discussion to discuss potential litigation. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, questions, comments? All right. Not an all-nighter, though. I have no. Not an all nighter. No, okay. No. Can we make a motion to make it five minutes. No, I think I think ten o'clock seems good. All right. I think ten o'clock sounds yeah. great. Um, we have to vote on this though. Um, all in favor of going back into exec? Okay. Thank you. It passes. All right. So we will now move into exec. Um, thank you very much. And everyone have a good first day of school. Everyone. I didn't have an eye twitch this year. <laughs>